I want to go now to Philip Allen LaCavara, former counsel to the Watergate special prosecutors, April Ryan, White House correspondent for American Urban Radio Networks, also our political analyst, and John Dean, former Nixon White House counsel and CNN contributor. So, John, um, let's just get to this basic conundrum here. The chairman of the Judiciary Committee is saying, uh, Bill Barr's team has said, guys, guess what? 11 a.m. or 12 tomorrow, that's when you're going to get the report. Obviously, the press conference is a couple hours uh, before that, right? 9.30 a.m. What, what, what's going on here? Well, it's obviously a conspicuous effort, again, to try to frame the, the report, to try to shape the news and influence it. And Aaron, it's really a reminiscent of Watergate days when Nixon decided to put out some tapes in anticipation that he was going to be asked for more of them. And what they did is they went out and briefed the press beforehand as to what they were going to read, which was not, in fact, what they would read, uh, and tried to shape that there was nothing there. And in the long run, the, crowd, the, the American public saw it for what it was, and they were outraged. So, April, what, what do you think is, is, there, is going on here? I mean, they all know that when they do this, when the president announces uh, before his attorney general even has a chance yeah. to, that they're putting a press conference out about a 400-page report before they even release a redacted version of the report, they all know that we're all going to say uh, this doesn't add up. Yet they still think this is going to work right. in the broader field of public opinion, right? I mean, is that why they're, they're doing this, this press conference right. before the report? Aaron, they're trying to cushion the blow as much as they can. Uh, there's a lot of contradictions already there. And with these redactions, uh, you already have people like former Attorney General Eric Holder, who I talked to yesterday with a report, who says, you know, they need to just release everything because it will ultimately be released. And Aaron, the thing of it is, if people indeed uh, don't get information from this highly redacted document that they want, there's going to be more of a clamoring for information. That press conference mm -hmm. at Justice is not going to do it, and neither with the press conference that the president may or may not have tomorrow. So they're trying to cushion the blow because there are already contradictions. We already heard the president say, oh, I'm totally vindicated. Well, apparently mm -hmm. he's not because they're still, at least on obstruction of justice, there was no conclusion on it. So we're going to find out a little bit more. And then what the White House comes out with, what they want to say, their rebuttal, that leaves something to be uh, desired as well. It's going to be point by point, topic by topic. Tomorrow's going to be a big day. All right. So, Philip, the New York Times is, is reporting Justice Department officials have had numerous conversations with White House lawyers about Mueller's conclusions. Um, is that acceptable? Does that bother you at all? Well, it bothers me a lot because it's the latest unseemly development in the relationship between uh, Attorney General Barr and the President. I'd also note that one of the major uh, areas of redaction that we can expect to see or to not see tomorrow will be uh, the redaction of grand jury information. Uh, the rule that requires grand jury secrecy applies uh, to the Justice Department and prohibits the Justice Department from releasing grand jury information to anybody else in the government other than in the Justice Department, and that includes the White House. So mm. if the Attorney General is disclosing this confidential information uh, to the White House lawyers, I think it's not only unseemly but actually improper, and it will undermine uh, his justification tomorrow for saying that a lot of what Mueller has written is being blacked out or whatever mm. his color code is, red, green, blue, or yellow. Right, and I want to ask you about those redactions because that's very important. But but first, John, to this point, um, you know about what who's seeing what and what the point is. Since the bar summary, right, which was a four-page, they say it's not a summary, but um, whatever it is, um, blank of principal conclusions, uh, right. So you have a four-page summary of a three to four hundred-page report the bar put out. He decided himself, the president didn't obstruct justice, right? He made it clear Mueller didn't make that decision. Barr did himself. Barr then went uh, in, in front of Congress and said he believed there was spying on the Trump campaign. That's the president's word. It's an inaccurate and highly partisan word used to describe uh, what could have happened. How can anyone take what Bill Barr says tomorrow as anything but covering for the president? Well, it'd be very difficult to do so. He, his credibility in Washington has certainly slipped. Uh, maybe he still has some cre credibility with Trump's base who want to hear what he has to say, uh, but it's, a, it's sad. He, uh, he, he has actually done this before as well uh, in protection mm -hmm. of another president. So this isn't a totally new pattern for Barr. Uh, when we did, did a little digging, as it's come out in the last few months, we saw he'd done exactly the same thing in, both in pardons and investigations 
Yep. Uh, that he nipped in the bud things were headed towards the White House. Yeah, Ryan, Ryan Goodman's uh, excellent, excellent analysis of a, a prior summary he did uh, about FBI detentions. April, neither Mueller nor anyone from his team is going to be at the press conference, okay? But I do want to note they right. did work on the redactions, and, and that's important to put that out there. They were a part of that decision-making as far as we knew at this point. But what does it say that Mueller did not sign the summary, that Mueller will not be at the press conference? He is not in any way putting his imprimatur on this. He doesn't want to be uh, political with this. He doesn't want to make it political when it is political. And it could go down that political route, you know, going to the Hill. Um, you know, he wants to keep his credibility. Uh, he doesn't want to look like he's in uh, with this administration as Bob Barr has, as, excuse me, uh, Bill Barr has taint on him from uh, what is going on right now. And the questions that loom about how close he is to the president and what is this and what is that. Mueller is trying to stay away and trying to keep uh, the sanctity of this of this investigation intact. Um, it's going to be hard, but there are going to be questions uh, of him after this is over. I'm quite sure because we're going to be left with questions. They never seem to always answer the questions the way yeah. we think they should. So, yes or no, or give us the mm -hmm. detail. And Mueller's staying away from that because he knows he has foreshadowing of things to yeah. come. So, so Philip, let me ask you about the, the, the redactions, because as you've pointed out, the only way to get grand jury testimony, uh, you, you know, you have said is, is to initiate formal impeachment proceedings and then you can force uh, Congress to get all of the grand jury testimony behind this. But it's not just grand jury, jury testimony that will be redacted. It will be classified information, sources and methods and all this color coding. So we know there's going to be two versions now. Uh, a less redacted version of the report will go to a limited uh, number of Congress. Uh, limited members of, of Congress. That's what Congress uh, demanded. But, um, but eventually is the word. So in other words, tomorrow we're all getting this one version and eventually there'll be another one. What do you make of that eventually? Well, I don't know how much will be uh, released to Congress eventually. Certainly, I think it's understood that the uh, intelligence committees will get the portion of the redacted report that reinstates the intelligence information mm. that was uh, stripped out, but it's uh, unlikely that they will also see the grand jury information uh, and the other FBI information that I think is even more sensitive for, uh, for purposes of assessing the president's behavior and the behavior of his, his family, because the, the uh, attorney general has said he's going to remove information that uh, might affect the reputation of what he calls peripheral third parties. Uh, as well as grand jury material. And I'd like to know, for example, whether he considers Donald Jr. Uh, a peripheral third party when, uh, whose reputation needs to be protected uh, when he was obviously central to one of the meetings uh, with Russian uh, intelligence representatives in Trump Tower. Right. And these are all questions I know will be asked of Bill Barr tomorrow before we even see the report. We'll see whether he'll answer it or say, well, I'm not going to comment until the report comes out, and then I'm not going to comment at all. And we can all see how you, this, this could easily uh, spin into uh, nothing. Thank you all very much.